Systems work, people fail. This is the Advisor Mentorship Podcast, proven systems and processes for the 21st century advisor with Jeremy Hauser. In today's crowded marketplace, advisors must find a way to differentiate themselves from the competition. Learn how to elevate your game and accomplish incredible feats as Jeremy teaches you proven systems and processes to successfully build a 21st century advisory practice and discover how developing a work-life balance is not only possible, but achievable. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of the Advisor Mentorship Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Hauser, and very exciting show this week as I have a very dear, dear friend of ours and also a a great advisor across the country uh, in Roger Smith out of Tennessee. And one thing with this show is what we really strive to do is present good systems and processes that advisors across the country are utilizing and having success within their actual area. So no further ado, let me go ahead and uh, introduce Roger. And Roger, do you mind sharing with the viewers a little bit more about yourself, where you're located, and how you got into the business? Yes, sir. Good morning, Jeremy. And uh, hey, thanks for having me. And uh, you're you're too kind with your words. I very appreciate that. Um, Again, my name is Roger Smith. Uh, I'm located in uh, Waynesboro, Tennessee. It's a little small town south of Nashville. I'm the uh, the owner and principal of the Roger Smith Agency, uh, and we have about uh, seven employees. And we are primarily a PNC agency, which and uh, we, uh, I guess, we're more of a multi line agency. If if anything, we do we do all all, all sorts of um, sell all sorts of insurance products and so forth. So uh, we. Very fortunate to um, be where we're at, in my opinion. Uh, I think rural, small-town America has some advantages, and uh, we uh, hopefully take take advantage of some of those things. And when you when you say uh, Waynesboro, Tennessee, so a lot of those that are listening, I mean, myself included originally when we first started working together, talk a little bit about that. So what is the size of that population that you're currently in? Well, you're probably not going to believe it, but our, our little town, Waynesboro, which is the county seat uh, of Wayne County, and we're about 2,500 people in our little small town, and our entire county consists of about uh, about 18,000 uh, residents. So, uh, again, very, 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 very small, very rural, but we do border or are close to, you know, some larger large areas like uh, North Alabama, which is the uh, Lawrence area, Muscle Shoals area, has several hundred thousand people, and of course, we're south of Nashville. Which is, um, you know, which is really, really grow, growing city right now. Very popular city to move to. So we're kind of caught in the middle of those, and um, kind of, I feel like got the best of both worlds. Uh, we're small enough to uh, know each other and and and, and do things, but yeah, you know, uh, we're close enough to larger cities uh, to to you know to go those you know do those things and uh, you know what we need to do in those larger towns. So I feel kind of like we got the best of both worlds. And and it I, and I love your story, especially and I've, as we've had numerous conversations about it. And you mentioned PNC, so that's primarily where your practice was. Um, I know you joined here with Insuremark a little over ten years ago. So you've had, I guess, a little uh, pivotal moments in your practice where you've adjusted more to the retirement side of things. So how what act actually got you more interested in not only joining in Shermark, but also what really helped you out with expanding your brand more so from just PNC? Well, uh, I come from a life and health background primarily, and I was, I was always, you know, as typically as most life and health guys are, you know, they're, they're always sort of short of people to talk to. They always, had, you know, seem like we didn't have enough people to talk to. And I was always fascinated with the property and casualty agencies because they, they had you know, generally hundreds and sometimes thousands of clients. And I thought that would be so nice to have all those prospects. So back in uh, about August of 1999, uh, I had the opportunity to open up a property and casualty agency or shop as we would call it. And, um, and, uh, and it's, I'd never really done a lot uh, with annuities before then. Uh, again, a life and health guy, and I decided I just wanted to be, you know, have more people to talk to. And being a service-oriented mindset of mine, I, it, it, it fit really well. Well, uh, and, and about that time, Insuremark had contacted me uh, shortly after that, uh, probably in the mid-2005s or so forth, and and uh, 
had dabbled in some annuities, some fixed index annuities, and really had kind of grown a little bit apprehensive because at that time the the products were you know fairly limited with the monthly average and the monthly point to points, and some of the returns were you know not or a little bit less than what we hopefully we expected. So I was really sort of getting a little bit you know painted or soured, whatever word you want to use on on annuities. Then then. Then the uncapped product with uh, a theme came out. Uh, I guess Aviva at that time, and uh, I've come a little bit, look again, a little bit apprehensive about you know looking at it a little bit, and uh, so I got to sort of dabbling in that, and uh, then then saw some of the you know the strong returns and, and so forth. So I really got excited about you know having the opportunity to present that to my clients, and 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 we just evolved um, uh, over the years of. Um, Developing those relationships with clients through, you know, a lot, a lot through my agency, you know, it, it's and and this and this we've grown, we've really grown over the years from uh, from some humble beginnings in, in the annuity side. Where right now today we're probably about a hundred, hundred twenty million dollars worth of assets under management. We'll say on the annuity side, and that really goes to to your credit too and your drive because I know and we've had conversations about this. A lot of advisors out there, or I should say a lot of agents with the, the PNC side of business, it's the struggle where uh, PNC advisors, it's almost where they have it um, kind of flipped. PNC individuals end up having a lot of foot traffic getting into the door, meeting with new prospects each and every day. So the opportunity is there. While I talk, on the other hand, to my advisors in they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars to uh, just trying to find somebody to have a conversation with and to sit down with them. So really where I think it's a, a very pivotal moment, I guess, in your career was able to identify, well, let's go ahead and have an additional conversation with these people that are coming in about their retirement accounts. So how do you get your team and your staff to uh, kind of be on board and I guess be more of a diverse culture than just their your traditional PNC shop. Well, you know, of course, our staff uh, are very attuned to the to the needs and so forth of our clients. We try to make sure we understand what our clients' needs are, and when someone comes in, that's you know, uh, we'll call you know, senior, you know, typical or you know, early retiree or retirees and so forth. Our staff is pretty much knows that they had that's a that's an opportunity to talk to that customer about a need that they have, and so they'll maybe even you know they'll bring it up to the customer and say we you know we have a you know gentleman office Roger that uh, you know you know specializes in retirement planning and uh, you you might want to have you know want to have a conversation with him and it just starts the process there so um, we're you know we're looking out for opportunities to where we can help our customers fulfill their dreams, you know, and, um, and that's, and I love seeing or being able to work with a customer and seeing them when they walk out the door happy, they have a peace of mind knowing, Hey, they, all the, all the things they work for all these years, all the goals and the dreams that they have, hopefully can see those kind of preparation because something we've helped them with. And our staff sees that and they, and that's, uh, and they, and they reward it, you know, they, we, you know, it's a rewarding feeling to say, Hey, we helped that customer. And that's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we're supposed to do. And and so over hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, assets that you've actually helped protect that customer to give them that peace of mind here over the last 10 years. And once again, that, that population that you're actually in and marketing in your town is just a little over 2,000 people. So what are some of the challenges you find in your practice or uh, what are you always trying to get? I know you're always trying to get better. What have you seen any challenges uh, this year for your business? Well, you know, it's sort of threefold, I guess I would say, when, when in challenges. We, you know, the ultimate time management, the, the work life balance. You know, I think that's always a challenge for any, any advisor or any agent or insurance, uh, you know, person out there. That's, that's always, you know, trying to figure out, okay, you know, where do I draw the line here as far as work, or, you know, or, you know, a work life balance, we'll call it. And, uh, that's always a challenge. And, and, and it will always continue to be a challenge, in my opinion. Of course, we know all the regulatory issues that we have, you know, that's happening. And again, just making sure we're doing we're doing the we're doing the right thing for our our customer, you know, as far as the producer responsibility, putting our clients' best interest and so forth. And, uh, and of course, that's a biggie. It's in it and it's in it. 
And it's something we really need to pay attention to that we are taking care of that client. We're doing, again, doing the right thing for that client. But I think another one, it's, it's especially since uh, COVID, is using technology. You know, how to use that and still keep that, uh, you know, that human touch element in place. And, 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 and at the same time, provide the service that the client deserves. And I think that's probably our big, one of our biggest challenges going forward is how do we do that? How do we use technology and, 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 and continue to, to do, provide that service that, that your typical client wants? And, you know, and, and I think the typical client that, that, that as we as in the retirement side are working with, it's, it's still a little bit, um, uh, naive about going 100 percent into technology they still they come from a generation in that in that mindset that, hey i want i want to meet i want to talk i want somebody live i want somebody real i want that human touch so i think that's one of the biggest challenges we face today is how to again how to use technology how to keep our clients safe in today's world but still provide that the service that the client needs and deserves well, it, there's definitely the the service component, and uh, <laughs> I know every time uh, it seems we're getting together. If it's uh, if it's events or any uh, particular trips that we're taking together uh, due to qualifications and so forth, it seems that Roger always is taking that customer call. So that work life balance is definitely something I know you're uh, you're trying to strive to be better at each and every day. So it's always, uh, it's always very, uh, great to kind of see greatness in front of you watching Roger handle a customer. And he always has that customer first in mind. So our, when you joined, uh, so starting to work with InsureMark, I know, uh, going to that topic of best practices and really trying to make sure you are taking advantage of, uh, your time. So what was probably your biggest investment in your business here over the last call it five to 10 years? Well, that's a, that's a great question. And, and, uh, I thought about that a little bit. And, uh, just like we just said, being able to take care of that customer is probably one of my, uh, you know, our greatest jobs we have as an advisor, because without that customer, we don't have a job, but we'll say, so I think my biggest investment, I think, I've invested in a couple of personal assistants in the, over the last several years. And what I mean by that is uh, I use those assistants to, uh, to help me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm meet, typically meeting with the client and, and, um, and so forth and, and, and hopefully helping them. But once, once I, I'm finished with the client, my assistants are following up with the client. They are, you know, holding their hand. They're talking to them, following through the transfer, if there's a transfer process, uh, you know, helping them with that, making, keeping them, keeping them abreast of where we're at. If there's anything that I forgot and I always do, uh, some kind of address, I either put it down wrong or, or, or forgot something. You know those things that the, that my assistants were following up with, and uh, and again, they're uh, the most important thing. They're keeping the customer involved in the process. You no, know, the customer doesn't want to just say, "Hey, I meet with you, Roger," and they're, you know, and never hear from me again until you know I've got some kind of policy or something down the road. So I think it's very important to keep that customer involved in the uh, in, in the loop. We'll say of, uh, of the process of uh, you know from the beginning to the end, and uh, and you know. My assistants are following up with the transfer companies, or they're doing conference calls with the customer to make sure that they, you know the transfer happens. Uh, you know they're again just, uh, and I and I found that 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 really frees me up to do what I do best, which is you know to get the gab, I guess, or and have a continue to have a conversation with you know our you know our new clients, and it gives me more freedom too to really take care of my customer. Instead of me having, a, having talking with a customer and trying on the back in the back of my mind, saying, "Okay, I've got to get this over here and I got to get this over here," you know, my assistants are doing that. So it really frees me up to to really get engaged with my customer to be able to help them that I'm and I'm you know having that conversation with. So that's probably my biggest investment. I really thought about it before I done. It. I thought, is it really worth hiring someone just to do that? And uh, I would encourage anyone out there to really consider if you can't do one full time, do it part time. But uh, it's really, really been a tremendous asset to my businesses. And now I started out with one. Now I have two, two personal assistants doing those things. So uh, it's um, been a huge, huge asset, Marvin. Isn't it tough to give up uh, the kings to the king or the the keys to the kingdom, though? <laughs> well. Uh, you know that comes to having faith, or you know, hiring the right person. You know, hiring the right person to uh, to do those things. You know, I'm not asking them to to have you know to try to engage with a customer about what this means, what that means as far as a product. We're not doing that. We don't. You know, we're actually just having that my my system to just to do that. You know that that 
stuff that I hate doing, like follow up stuff. You know, hey, I forgot your birthday, or you know, or did, did we get this beneficiary name spelled correctly, or so forth. Those things that I really don't like doing or hate doing, and and um, and it just frees me up again to do what I do best. Hopefully, is you know, is provide that you know, provide that take care of that need for that customer, and um, so. It works really well for us, and um, again, I highly recommend it. If uh, if a person's out there, it's uh, you know, it's a one man band, uh, you know, that that really frees him up to get back to back what we just said. Some of that work life balance, and uh, you, um, and it gives you the opportunity to concentrate more on what you do best. Well, talking talking about that for especially your practice itself, I'm going to go through a couple of numbers for you real quick. So when we uh, Started uh, advisor mentorship program. If we go back to 2017, so I told you I wasn't going to share these numbers till now. So I'm pretty sure you're curious on those. So from 2018 to 2019, Roger, your business grew 27 percent. So from 18 to 19, it grew 27 percent. From 19 to 20, your business grew an additional 16 percent. When the industry was down 23%, your business actually grew an additional 16%. And so far as of today, as of what our recording is here, just through the month of September, you have not only already done the amount of production you did in 2020, but you're actually on track right now to double your business from your original 2017. Wow. So it's pretty it's pretty interesting to watch the the growth, and I think uh, it it would probably go hand in hand with what you mentioned. And I, it's always it's always interesting to hear advisors say where they think their biggest investments are, because I I think that is too where probably the growth has gone is like you mentioned hiring people and leveraging your time efficiently to meet with more of the customers. So is that what you would probably absolutely absolutely absolutely. Yeah, and and I know for the last uh, four years, so we do these advisor mentorship programs. We've done these monthly phone calls. Is there anything particular that you get out of those uh, monthly calls that we host with all those advisors? You know, once a week or once a month within your your team. Yes, uh, one of the things I look forward to is some of the ideas that some of the other advisors use. I'm always looking for new ideas, a way to help my customer. You know, new new things to do or talk or say to my customer. So that's one of the biggest things I, I get out of the uh, you know out of those um, those calls. You know, always looking for you know again new ways to you know the the you know help help your business. You know, our our agency grow, but and you know it's, if we can help our agency grow, that means we're helping a client. And if we're helping the client, that means that we're it's a client's happy, we're happy, and we're do, you know hopefully doing the right thing. And again, always looking for you know new ideas or new strategies or you know even new product designs or you know things that that you always do a real well job of bringing this new you know you know a certain company or a certain product may offer this particular strategy, this particular you know scenario, this particular idea. So I'm always it's always fascinating to hear those things. And those those motivate me, encourage me to say, hey, I, you know I'm gonna talk to my customer. I say, hey. You know, I've got this new idea here, or this new new product strategy. Let's have a conversation about it. And uh, you know, and just again, again, hearing the other guys as they continue to grow in their practice, and 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 that's rewarding. You know, and and be able to uh, maybe, hopefully, you know, again, and we're, you know, this is one of the things InsureMark does. You know, you know, they teach us to help. You know, not only our clients, but to te- help other advisors. So if I can somehow, in my you know small way of helping an advisor grow. Or helping his client, have him take care of his client better. You know that's that's a win-win in my opinion. In in that camaraderie too, because I know um, just last year, I think when we went up to your office with a handful of advisors, um, I know you you get to meet and uh, chat with some of the guys, and uh, I know you definitely like that uh, that camaraderie that you've probably formed with some of those relationships over the course of the last couple of years. I, I know that that's definitely something that, and that's always fun for me to be around guys like yourself and others. And I uh, always feel like when we get to share ideas and then come back home, uh, there's always something that uh, each one of us maybe learned in that experience. How do customers find you? So what are you doing in, in your town? Um, I know you have the PNC business. So what are you doing to get in front of, of new people? Well, we we market 
uh, in lots of different ways. Uh, we 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 do everything from radio to billboard and newspaper. You know, we're really getting more into the you know the the Facebook you know um, social media aspect, or you know, we're trying to do more and more actively doing things on on Facebook. I probably think our biggest our, our biggest attraction to customers. I, I I've said this from the beginning. And I'll say it. I'll continue saying it. I feel that, like the way we treat our customers. Uh, we treat them with respect and dignity. We put them first. We are a very service minded agency. And in other words, our goal is to uh, to service that customer in whatever ways that is. And that's help them out with their groceries at the supermarket or, or doing what we can in here. And whatever we can do to help our client. You know, in my opinion, that client owns my business. And my, it's my job to take care of that client because without that client, I don't have a business. So I think. To narrow it down to one is probably not, uh, uh, you know, I can do that, but I think the way, again, we, we try to market, we're very we're active in our community. I'm a, I'm a Rotarian, Chamber of Commerce, uh, past president, board of directors, and anything we can do to, to be active in our community, to give back to our community. You know, at the end of the day, we, I depend on the community for my, for my living, and that's just my way of giving back. So uh, I think we're just being active and really, again, really, really taking care of that customer. I can't stress that enough because if you take care of that customer, they're going to take care of you. And, uh, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's a win-win. And um, uh, I think, again, it's just our work ethic, the way we do things, and our mindset, you know, again, bending over backwards for that client. And uh, I think that helps us tremendously. And I, I know around this time, so when, when this airs here, it's going to be kind of hard to, to get a hold of Roger because uh, Medicare season's coming up. <laughs> so I, I think that also, how many, just out of curiosity, how, how many people do you think you uh, see just through Medicare alone? And then um, can you talk a little bit about that, of how you're able to not only help the customer with those needs, but why it might make sense of going and helping them with numerous other Obstacles they may come about, not just Medicare. Well, uh, we we literally have probably thousand or more Medicare supplement clients and or Medicare clients. And to me, it's a natural marriage. Most people that I've discovered that are on Medicare, and typically I always joke about this. Other and I'll have a conversation with the customer. I'd say, other than your grandkids, the two things that keep you up at night is your health and the health of your finances. And that's the things that make that you worry about. And uh, and I think by helping people with their Medicare, it's a natural natural marriage to help them with their finances or vice versa. And um, it's most people on Medicare again they they have a need. They have they again they want to stay healthy, and or you know and 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 they want their finances to be healthy. And I think we have a unique opportunity as an advisor that that where we can talk to them about their Medicare planning. We can also talk to them about their retirement planning. And that puts a customer, that gives them a huge peace of mind. That makes them sleep at night. And I'm very fortunate and very blessed to be able to, uh, you know, take care of those needs, in my opinion. And for, for those advisors that are listening, and I know you do such a great job, what what advice would you give them or what what encouraged you to work with myself and or the company of InsureMark? For those advisors that are listening, what's something that maybe you could uh, any advice to give? I, I think you guys and I have this little phrase that actually one of our other companies use, but but I can apply it to InsureMark. In my opinion, you guys are above all in service. Um, you guys go you go the extra mile to help us as advisors. You're always there when we call or need you. You know you you the vast array of products that you have you, and and the training. Uh, I could go on and on, but uh, but you know what? I think the most of all is important with me and the mark is the relationships. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm huge on that word relationship, but uh, I think that is imp- it, extremely important in in your daily activities of who you do business with, and um, I think it's important to have that relationship and and your. I think you may have mentioned on your on your other podcast, Jeremy, but it's so true. The family culture. That, that comes from InsureMark, you know, the, again, the relationships, the, the uh, camaraderie, the, all the, uh, the extra things like trips and incentives and things that you guys do. And, and, and you really build those relationships, you know, and when another IMO calls, 
you don't you don't talk to them. You know, why would I want to leave a place that I'm very very comfortable with and I'm I've got all the products I need, I got all the support I need, and you guys are always on the cutting edge, up looking at for new products or new marketing strategies or you know new uh, ideas about how to uh, you know gather new customers to talk to and so forth. And you know I could go on and on all the accolades that uh, that Insuremark brings to the table. But um, I would I would dare I would dare to ask anyone to find a better IMO out there than what Insuremark can offer. And I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you, Jeremy. I really really mean that from the bottom of my heart. And uh, you guys have been just such an asset for my business. My business has really grown since I've developed a relationship with you guys and started actually back in 2007. Actually, uh, when I first talked to one of your um, advisors. And and then it's in and then just kind of about around 2008 2009 sort of said hey I'm I'm gonna be serious about this and we it sort of took off but uh, but uh, you guys are always there you know and it's um you know I, I what you guys stand for the belief system that that Steve Kearns brings to the table and the the, the quality of advisor that he that, that you guys have. Uh, you know, like you say, it's more of a cultural thing, and it really is. And uh, I, you guys have it all, I, in my opinion. You know, you got again, you got the products, you got the service, but most of all, you're there for that. You, you're there for that relationship, which to me is is is, is the most important. Well, appreciate the reciprocal, definitely. So obviously, relationships, uh, getting to know you, and and everything has been has been awesome. Many years to come, so I'm very excited about that. Is there anything that we have not discussed yet or any words of wisdom that you'd like to share with the audience? I would tell any advisor, and I think me and you've talked about this, Jeremy. I think I even gave you a book on this or something similar. But I would I would encourage any advisor, just listen. Listen to your clients. Listen to their needs, their wants, their desires, their fears. Just listen to them. And, you know, because that's what they want to do. They, When you're having a conversation with a client, they probably have a need or a concern. Just listen to them and, you know, and and then you can help them. Don't do all the talking, you know, because people they're coming to you for for help typically, and they, and they and again they want that peace of mind. And then uh, and just again, I'm back to this service oriented uh, mindset. Listen, take care of that customer. Do everything you got to do to take care of that customer, because uh, you know they have other opportunities to go other advisors, other you know other shops out there. You know, give them a reason to you know stay with you. Give them a reason not to leave you, and uh, and when you work with them, take care of them. Just like this is what we talk about in Suremark. Why would I want to leave in Suremark? You guys are you listen to me, you hear my concerns, uh, and you take care of me. So I don't have a reason to leave. I mean to leave, excuse me. And uh, and same way. I hope you got a reason to live, Roger. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) hope so. (laughs) But uh, you know, in all seriousness, it's. you know, do the same thing with your customer. Don't give them a reason to leave you. You know, make them really think about leaving you. And and back to that relationship, you know, customers going to do business with people they have a relationship with. You know, develop that relationship. You know, become their friend. Become their, you know, their, you know, their, their, their advisor. You know, help them. Help them. And it may not be insurance. They, you may just have to be a, you know, a counselor one day. You know, they may have a problem that you may just want somebody to listen to you. Be that, be that friend. Be that person. You know, become part of their, you know, become part of their life. Because, listen, they're giving you their their livelihood, and they're they're you know they're giving you a lot of their assets, and and they depend on those assets to live, you know, and to, you know, or to leave, you know, a legacy. So they're they're putting a, they're putting a lot of faith in you as an advisor. So just listen, listen to them, and take care of them. And to me, that may sound simple to a lot of guys. I'm gonna tell you how powerful it is to know that to know that customer trusts you, and if they trust you and have that relationship with you, you know I always say this: birds will feather flock together. You know they have friends and neighbors that they that they that they talk to that they're gonna refer you because they trust you and they believe in you, and um, and and that's the greatest referral you can get from someone that already does business with you. They refer you to someone else, and um, and end of the day it may be a simple approach but it, it it's an approach that i've taken and it's just doing the right thing it's just you know just the golden rule you, you treat those people you want to be treated and that's how i treat them that's the way i want to be treated i want to be if i'm talking to the advisor 
uh, or, you know, someone like that, I want him taking care of Roger Smith, not his back pocket or, or be thinking about somebody else. And uh, that's how I look at it. Again, use a simplistic approach, but it works for us, and um, I wouldn't do it any other way. That's awesome. Awesome words, words of wisdom from one of the best. So I, I do appreciate you hopping on here, uh, sitting down with us, Roger. Uh, you are a dear friend to us, and I, I definitely think a lot of uh, nuggets that you uh, told here on this uh, quick little podcast could be very beneficial to those advisors. And if you want, uh, feel free to subscribe to the Advisor Mentorship Podcast. Follow us on LinkedIn or go out there and just click on uh, subscribe on your favorite podcast network. So till next time, uh, we look forward to hearing from each and every one of you and let us know how we can help. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Advisor Mentorship Podcast with Jeremy Hauser. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available and connect with Jeremy on LinkedIn to stay up to date. If you would like to request our introduction kit, feel free to check out www.advisormentorship.com and click on learn more. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of InsureMark. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only.